Hey ladies, we are back with another episode of the Robin Graham show. And I have a question for you. Have you thought about starting or maybe even just monetizing a Facebook group that you already have? We are going to dive deep into the three-step roadmap to growing and monetizing a Facebook group so that you can make 10K a month, maybe. Doesn't that sound great? That is what my guest today specializes in is growth and monetizing Facebook groups for her clients to then become successful entrepreneurs and experiencing 10K months. So of course that sounds great to everyone. And I'm super excited to dive into this conversation and this topic because as I have a Facebook group, it's called the Female Entrepreneur Insider, but I haven't done a lot with that Facebook group. So if you've been over there, there are posts, I do live trainings, but it's been hit and miss, especially because of the book launching and everything else in 2022. So I'm really happy that we get to learn all about this today and I can take my group to a whole new level and watch you guys take your groups to a whole new level as well. So without further ado, Michelle Vroom, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Thanks, Robin. I'm so excited to chat with you. I'm happy that you're here. This is a topic that I think is almost controversial. You hear some people say, oh, you definitely have to have a Facebook group. And then you hear other people say, oh, it's so not worth the time and the They're energy. Dead. They're dead. And they're dead. Yeah. And honestly, I will say that I've struggled with this and I've neglected mine this year because I felt in 2021, it was active, people were engaged, and then that really slipped off. And I'm kind of like, why am I putting energy into that? So mm -hmm. I'm happy that you're here and you can give us a little insight. Like maybe I can revive my Facebook group or the listeners who have experienced the same thing, or maybe just want to start one and they can start it off on the right foot and actually use it as a growth opportunity for their business. Oh yes. So much to say on this. Topic. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. So tell us a little bit about you and your journey to, to get to where you are today, specializing in Facebook groups. Yeah, absolutely. So I am a business coach who obviously supports women in getting to their first 10 K month using their group. And I will say that's like the dream and it's what we're working toward, but even in the short term, just making sales from their group, right? Like it's like making sales leads into the 10 K month. I'm excited about that. Obviously I practice what I preach. I have a group of nearly 7,000 women. I've been in business for six years. I've got three boys at home. I started my business when my oldest was six months old, because I thought, why not six month old baby and a business sounds great, not stressful at all. And when I started, I was very much like a general, like targeting small business owners, doing the marketing for them, social media, like all the things. About a year and a half into business, I moved into coaching. And then I've continued to specialize from there. As you serve coaching clients, as you learn more about where your natural skill set is and where your talents are, I think that's where a lot of people start to move into being a specialist. And that's what happened with me. People would ask me all the time, how do you grow your group? Like, how are you doing the things that you're doing with your group? And to be honest with you, Robin, it didn't seem like a big deal to me. I thought it was a no brainer. I thought it was basic. And isn't that the case for all of us? It's like the thing that we're so good at, we think we're basic. Like it's basic knowledge. Anybody can figure it out. And maybe people can Google how to grow a Facebook group, how to monetize a Facebook group, but it's the implementation, right? And execution that I think people struggle with. And that's where I can really support my clients. And I resisted going all in on Facebook groups for a long time. This is a relatively, when I say relatively new and within the last six months to a year, like I have decided that I am owning this because so few people are right. Everybody talks about getting clients and making 10 K months, but there's a lot of ways to do that. And I think mm -hmm. people feel very overwhelmed in the online space. I think that people don't have simplicity in their marketing. They feel like they have to be on all the channels doing all the things. Like I hear people talking about now I got to go over to TikTok. TikTok gets great engagement. Okay. But like what money are people making off of TikTok, right? Like you hear about all of this stuff and it's just so overwhelming for so many people that I decided I want to simplify things for my clients. The people who want to go all in on their Facebook group, I want to literally give them like the simplest, fastest roadmap, right? to reaching 10K months, to getting consistent sales. It's not gonna happen overnight, but it can be very simple. And so that's what I've really been working toward in the last six months to a year, just because I feel in my heart that there are just so many amazingly talented women who are having a hard time getting themselves out there because it's you gotta be doing all the things and be on all mm -hmm. the platforms. It's exhausting. So that, I don't want to go down on that tangent because I think that's a whole other topic, but that really is like the impetus for why I am going all in on Facebook groups 
and really owning that. No, I respect that a lot because it is very overwhelming and it's really hard to decide what platform to spend your time on. So if they're, you know, as you're looking at this, as the listeners or anyone is looking at this and what platform it is, like you have to look at the ROI because it takes a lot of time. Are you going to see results? Is your ideal audience on that platform or are they spending more time on another platform? And I think a lot of people think, oh, Facebook is for old people. I don't think so anymore. I think we're, that pendulum is swinging back because I'm seeing a lot of young entrepreneurs on Facebook. And so that tells us that there is opportunity there. And I don't think that at any given time, something just completely drops off and has no opportunity available. No, especially it. Facebook. Let's still look at the numbers, right? Now, among some people, Facebook numbers have dropped. I would say that there is like a... I guess I'm aging myself, a young crowd that like gravitates toward TikTok and does these crazy videos and all that stuff. Okay, cool. If that's your audience, then I guess go be on TikTok. But if we look at Facebook's numbers, Facebook is still the biggest game in town. Yes, TikTok is growing. And I'm sure that there are people at Facebook who are like considering that and thinking about TikTok's growth. But when we look at Facebook's numbers, when we look at the fact that all Facebook has to do is shut down for a couple hours. And what do people do? They then, when it's back up, flock to Facebook to complain about Facebook. Like Mm -hmm. that's how ingrained Facebook is in our day-to-day life. And I don't see that going away anytime soon. And even if it did, Robin, there will always be a Facebook. There will always be a need for community. I don't care what people say about TikTok. You cannot create the same kind of community on TikTok Mm -mm, that you can mm -mm. in a Facebook group. Mm -mm. TikTok is you watching video. It's you, boom. It's somebody videoing at you. If that makes sense. Facebook group is where you can really build that rapport and that community. We need that. As human beings, we need that. And if we're not going to get it on Facebook, we're going to get it somewhere else. But I just don't see that going away anytime soon. And I think we have to remember that. And I think people have to set realistic expectations for how they use their groups and what they expect out of their groups. Cut my sales process in half. Yeah. Because when people join my group and they binge my content or they talk with me I'm in there, I'm not like, it's not like I'm putting up stuff and then just disappearing. Like I'm having conversations with them. I'm building that trust and that rapport and that credibility. And that accelerates the sales process. So I'm not just trying to like grow a Facebook group of hundreds of thousands of people. I don't need hundreds of thousands of people to be successful in business. Yeah. I think there's a lot to be said for that. And we are seeing you're not the only one that is making money off of a Facebook group. So let's dive into this because I think there's some real meat here. So the three-step roadmap to growing and monetizing a Facebook group, like what does that even look like? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give you a high level overview of each of the steps of the GPS method. And then I'll dive into talking about them in more detail. So step number one is grow, but not grow in the traditional sense of follow trains and just DMing people or inviting people who you have no idea who they are just so that you can get the numbers more on that in a minute. The second step, the P is pre-selling, which a lot of people forget to do. Jump right to, hey, you joined my group. Do you want to buy from me? No, there's so much that happens in between, right? There's pre-selling where you are establishing yourself as the expert through your content, through your engagement and relationships, building relationships with people. It's creating demand for your offer before you even sell it. So that's the second step. I think that's what sets me apart from other people, maybe who talk about growing and monetizing groups. And then the third step is to sell. But if you've done the work to pre-sell, selling becomes very easy in the sense because people already know what you're about. They've built a relationship with you. And so that's what, again, helps accelerate the sales process. And I break it down into those three steps because I want it to be simple. And what we teach our clients is actually one single strategy that hits on all of those steps. Because When it comes to the Facebook group world, there are a lot of people giving you different strategies at each of those levels and elaborate things that you need to do. No, it doesn't have to be elaborate. We actually teach our clients a strategy called destination events, which is hosting free live events inside of your Facebook group that make your group a destination. And I can go get into more detail about that, but basically what they do is they hit on all three of those things, right? One of the biggest pieces of growth and growing your group is getting the right people. Big groups, right, out there where people have hundreds of thousands of people in there, but there's no engagement because they just let anybody in. We are very selective about how we grow our group and making sure that we get the right people in. And so hosting a destination event is great because you're marketing what's happening inside of your group versus the group itself. Nobody cares that you have a free group. Like free groups are, they're a dime a dozen, right? What do people actually care about? They care about what's happening inside of the group. 
And so when you host a destination event that has a topic that attracts your people, you are making sure that you are getting the right people in. You have more control over that. And it, that, that's the basis of monetizing, right? If you don't get the right people in, then you're going to be sitting back wondering why I have all of these people in my group, but very little sales to show for it. And maybe I'll pause there because that's like the first step in talking about how the strategy can support you in the growth piece. Because I see so many people posting on these follow trains. Like, hey, open promo in my group, come join. Those follow trains are a joke because people are just posting their links and then leaving. And so if you do grow your group, who are you actually getting in there? I think people need to be way more intentional about who they're letting in, how they're growing and marketing their group. Like, I think we are all being challenged to market our groups in a much deeper way. I love that. And so this makes me think of your strategy is unique. And I, my question is when you have a Facebook group and you have those three questions that people can answer, and it's always been from what I, and I do this, and I know a lot of other people do this too, but that, that concept of, okay, one question is maybe what is your biggest struggle? The second question is what is your email address? Do you want to be on our email list to learn more, blah, 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 blah. And then the third question is maybe whatever, but it, this is goes so much deeper than that in terms of getting the right people in your group. Because for me, and I'm just going to use me as an example, like people don't take the time to say that, yes, they will respect the rules and two, why they want to be in the group, how they found the group and what their email address is to join our email address, to have that sense of community. Do they really want to be in the group or are they just those people who are in a million groups, but don't engage and try to learn in anything? So I'd like for you to talk just a tiny bit about that. When we're talking about attracting the right people, yes, we want to have our ideal audience in mind. We want to have like-minded people. We want to have people that are aligned with our values, but how do we bring those people in? Is it the importance of those three questions or is it this strategy of creating that demand, the event, the destination to bring them in? Yeah, I think it's all about how you market and position your group. So to me, the questions are really just a screening tool, like they're not the only tool themselves. And so how you position your group, even beyond the destination event, what are you talking about in your group? If there's like a great discussion or I'm going live on a particular topic, you better believe I'm going to go share that externally outside of my group because I want people who care about that topic to participate and to join my group. Again, it's all about like really marketing your group. A lot of people just say, hey, I have a free group. Okay, what type of people do you think you're going to attract if you position it that way versus like, this is what's happening inside of my group, right? That's why people should care. I think that's the game changer when it comes to bringing in people who will answer. Because if you do that, then you should see people who are answering the membership questions. You should see more of that. It's never going to be a perfect system. There will be people that you have to weed out. We do that all the time. We decline a lot of requests. And I would say that our group has actually grown slower than many, right? Like I've had my group for four years and we have almost 7,000 members. To some people, that's slow growth. That's, oh, I got 7,000 members in my first month. Guaranteed, majority of those people are not a good fit if you did that. Like, it's just the way it is. Let's be realistic here. You can't get 100K members in your group in one month and know that they are the right fit for you. Like, at that point, you were just focused on numbers versus the quality of your members. Yeah, I love that. And I think it's so important to focus on the quality, not the quantity. That's how you convert. Now, if you want to monetize your group, because we're talking about growing and monetizing, that's how you monetize. Like we have a smaller group maybe than some people, but I guarantee we probably have higher conversions. So let's talk more about that. Yeah. And that involves the pre-selling. That involves the pre-selling. Yep. You can't go when people, when you allow people into your group and then you go right into like, ready to buy from me, like what kind of energy does that send? A lot of people are looking at monetizing their group as something that they need to do in the short term. It's yes, a short-term strategy, but it's also a long-term strategy, right? People are going to join your group and they may not be ready to work with you yet. And you have to still be willing to show up and pour into them inside of a group for when they are ready. That's how I capture so many people from my group and they become clients is because what, if someone didn't buy within the first 90 days, which is on average, what tends to happen, right? Is we have people come into our group and then decide to work with us after spending 90 days in the group. I know they're going to buy eventually if they're the right fit. And because I'm always growing, right? And always bringing new people in and I'm always pre-selling 
and I'm always selling, I'm covered on all fronts, right? Like at any given moment, there are people who are ready to buy. There are also people who aren't ready to buy. And that's why the pre-selling is so important. So pre-selling via a destination event, when you're hosting that event, let's say it's if you're running a challenge, right? And it's a five-day challenge. You just had people spend five days with you right? Where they are learning more about what you do, where they're hearing your philosophy and your approach, and they're viewing you as an expert. There's a shift that happens where they're starting to view you as the expert. That is part of the pre-selling and that needs to happen in order to sell. If you're not making consistent sales from your group, then you're either not selling or talking about your offer enough, or you are just like, not even laying the groundwork for why you are different, for why people should buy from you, for what your approach is. And so that's why pre-selling is so important. We also do it through our content, right? When I talk about being a mom running a business, like I don't have to say, hey, buy my thing for people to view me as, ooh, she's running a multiple six-figure business with three boys at home. Like I'm interested in that. That's what I want, right? I shared when we moved into our dream home a few years ago, I shared the post about it and talked about what success represents to me. I wasn't selling a single thing in that post, but I was pre-selling for people who have a similar vision. As a coach, I need to paint the picture of this is where I'm going. This is where I've been. And this is where I'm going for people to view me as somebody who can support them. And we do that really well. We do it really consistently in our group. And it's not by my thing every five seconds, which is what a lot of groups have become. And because we do that really well, that allows us to then sell. Now, the destination event, right? After you spend five days with someone where you are sharing your information and helping them get quick wins, ideally the people who are already primed and ready to go, they're going to be the ones that you can sell to afterward. And that's when you should talk about your offer. And so the beautiful thing is that the destination event warms up people who aren't ready yet. Maybe they don't buy in that first round, but if you do multiple destination events, they're going to buy the next time because it warmed them up. And then you also have the people who are ready to buy. And so that destination event is what gets them off the fence and allows them to say, hey, I am ready to move forward. And so I think that we always have to take into account the different groups of people. I always like to say, if you split up your Facebook group audience right into thirds, one third will never buy from you. They're your cheerleaders. God bless them. Let them stay. They'll send other people your way. Another third are not ready to buy, but they are like the pre-clients who will be when you pre-sell. And then the other third are ready to buy. And a lot of times when we put out sales content in our group, we're not speaking to the people who are ready to buy because we feel like we have to capture everybody. But if you implement the strategy that I just mentioned, you don't have to worry about the people who aren't ready yet because you know that they will become ready. And in that time frame, when they're becoming ready, they're still hanging out in your group. And that's the power of groups. I could go on and on, but I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. And I love your energy around it because you, you can tell you're just very passionate about it. And so when you were, when you first mentioned destination event, I was thinking of those events that I've seen other coaches do. And I think it is Kelly Roche who has the something launch method, live launch method. Yeah. Where you bring people in and maybe it's three days, maybe it's five days, but like for her, I think it goes all the way out to seven days, but you have an event in your group and you do like a presentation, you tell them, Hey, we want you to come back tomorrow, but just so you know, we will be selling at the end of the presentation, whatever. And then you get all the way out and then you give do giveaways and all this stuff. It's this whole process. So that's what I initially was thinking of when you were talking about an event, but that is not necessarily what you're talking about, because I think that's intimidating when, okay, I want this information, you're going to be sold to, and you're going to be hard sold to by the end of this thing. And you're not talking about that though. You're talking about something completely different, like creating challenges, creating maybe trainings, but I, can you elaborate a little bit more on some ideas that people could take and run with to actually create these events in their groups without having that sense of, oh, I have to do this launch event every single time they're going in and creating a destination event. Yeah. Okay. A couple of things. So destination events can be a challenge. It can be a workshop. It can really be anything that happens ideally live, because again, you're building that rapport, although not everybody will attend live. So yeah, it doesn't have to be limited to a five day or seven day challenge. I encourage my clients to choose something that number one, that they want to deliver, but number two, that caters to their people. For some of them, maybe their people aren't going to attend a multiple day thing. And so they do a single workshop. I've even had clients do paid workshops as their destination events. And so maybe it doesn't happen in the main group, but it happens in like a pop-up group. So this can evolve, right? This can evolve at the more you do it. What I recommend is that my clients 
repeat the event. We usually recommend every 90 days so that whatever they put into place, they can reuse. It becomes a system versus this thing that I have to go put all this work into every single time. Cause I think that is very intimidating and it's gotta be a topic that they are excited about, that their people are excited about. I think that with the live launch method and maybe some other methods like that, the topics are also really big and hard to wrap your arms around. I always recommend that my clients choose something that gives people like a quick win. What are your people already thinking about? How can you give them a quick win so that they want to work with you, that it becomes exciting to talk about your offer versus this heavy thing. Now, I do think that people have control over how they view talking about their offer. If it feels heavy to you, then what pressure are you putting on yourself? That's something that I coach my clients through. But I think that this event has to be something that you are excited to deliver. It has to be something that you can do multiple times too. The first time you do it, it's like your dress rehearsal. It's like yeah. practice, right? Like you're probably going to flub your words. Tech, I'm sure something tech, tech will happen. Like just tech will happen. Yeah. And it won't be exactly what you expect. But the more you do it, there are going to be people in your group who watch multiple times the same topic. And that blows people's minds when I say that. But if you think about marketing, right, and you think about what people need, they need to see and hear things at least 10 to 12 times before they're ready to buy. That's just human nature. And so again, when we try to strong arm people into buying right away and like immediately before they've even really built some of that trust and credibility, I think that sets people up for that disappointment and for that heaviness and pressure. So I think I answered your question, but maybe went a little a little outside of it too, just to explain. No, I think it was great. Your answer yeah. was great. I think it's very helpful. And when you say repeat or repurpose that initial mm -hmm. event, whatever it is, are yeah. you doing the recording at that point or you're doing it live again? I would do it live a couple of times at least. I've had clients who want to move into doing something else. And so sometimes I'll tell them like, do it live one last time, record it, and then allow the recording to live on. But here's the piece. This is the thing, right? When you record it, or I'm sorry, do it live, right? Not record it inside of your group. It lives in there as a replay. And so what I've done, even for my own business, is I've done, let's say, a, a challenge, right, that was amazing, loved it, loved doing it. I will send people to that even after I've done it. It's just, hey, come in the group and check out the replay. The videos are still up. So that's the beautiful thing about this is it's so versatile, right? right? And really, again, like you are putting yourself on a stage, if you will, to be able to talk about what you do. But more important than that, it gives destination events give people an opportunity to serve and have fun. If you can do those two things, then I think the selling part becomes a lot easier. The rest is just your own mind, right? Around selling, which, you know. We all mindset. have our own beliefs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We That's mindset own. work. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do you have a few challenge ideas? Like you've mentioned the word challenge numerous times. Do you have so, some ideas? So I would reverse share? engineer. Yeah. So the ideas I give may not be applicable to the people listening, but what I'm going to do is show them how to reverse engineer. I know reverse engineer is like the least sexy term I could say right now, but roll with me here. What you want to do, and a lot of people don't do this, and that's also why it doesn't convert, because we do want to monetize. So I don't think we should have any shame in that. What you want to do is you want to consider, what do I want to offer people, right, after this event? What happens next for the people who are like, that was amazing, I want more from you, because there are people who want more from you. And so you have to get really clear on whatever that offer is. And then what I challenge my clients to do is think about, what does someone need, either need to know or need to have done? to be the best fit for your offer. Meaning like if that person came to you, you'd be like, oh my gosh, you already have this done. This is gonna be amazing. Like we're gonna be able to do so much together. That's the thing you wanna build your challenge around or whatever the event is, we'll say challenge, right? That's the thing you wanna build it around. For example, I just had this conversation with a client yesterday. She helps people craft resumes and go through the interview process, okay? People who are trying to find that perfect job. And so she was really struggling to come up with this idea for her challenge. It's okay, I could go with the resume thing, but that's part of my offer. So it feels very clunky. Like I'm not sure how to separate this. And so I asked her a question. I said, in order to like apply, like what are some of the challenges that people face in crafting their resume? And she's, they don't really know what that perfect fit job is. And so it's hard, like, I help them craft a resume that's applicable to the job that they want. And she's like, now that you said that, I noticed that most of my people are struggling to even find the jobs in the first place. And I was like, there's your challenge. There's your event is helping them actually find perfect fit jobs that they can apply to probably building them up. Cause I think a lot of people talk themselves out of applying to certain jobs. Sure. And then guess what? I'm going to help you with your resume. Seamless, like 
It's like you just serve them. You gave them real value in helping them achieve something. Like we're not talking about doing an event that gives all fluff. That's where I think some of the other methods, you know, dive into like more fluff stuff. We're actually helping people get a quick win so that they know they've accomplished something. And now we're like, hey, whoever wants more, this is what's next for you. No strong arming, no convincing. It's such an easy sell when you look at it that way. That's just actually a real-time example of what I just coached on yesterday. So hopefully that helps your people think, like you've got to think about the offer and start with the end in mind of what you would want to serve people with. And then look at what do they need to have accomplished or what knowledge do they need to be successful in your offer, but also to be the person who wants your offer. There's always a certain dream client, somebody who has the greatest sense of urgency where they see your offer as the missing puzzle piece to their problem. And so we want to be able to set them up to do that through the challenge. Yeah. I love that. And so when you do these challenges, then do you sell at the end of the challenge or this challenge is just... We sell at the end. We sell at the end. Our selling approach, I think, is probably a little different than others in the sense that for the people who are ready for more, this is what we can offer you. It's not for everybody. Like the goal isn't to get everybody who participated in this challenge to buy because a portion of them won't. They need to either do it again, or they need to spend more time in your group, checking out your content. And so we're ready for them when they decide to buy. But if you're running this regularly, there will always be a portion of people who are ready. And that's the exciting thing, right? That's how you reach the consistency. That's how you get to the 10 K month is by not just doing it once and being like, people didn't buy. It's a short-term strategy, but more than that, it's long-term in the sense that it's always bringing in a cycle. People that, that aren't ready yet, but become ready, the more you nurture them. And then you're selling to the people who already know that they're ready and who want more. Because I think the other thing that is really important here for people who might be a little bit like, monetizing a group scares me. Like how can I sell in my group? People are conditioned not to buy, or how can I give them all this value and then turn around and sell? Remember that selling and you talking about your offer is part of the value that you give some of your members, because some of your members are past your content in your group. Like free groups are great. Love my group. There are some people who are like, I'm in the market, like a boss group. And I need more. I need more. This has been great. It's gotten me to a point but it can't do everything for people. And that's where I think there's real value in them choosing to work with you, but they don't know that's a possibility if you don't tell them. And so I also just want to reframe that for anybody who might be a little nervous and feel their palms sweating because yeah. you know, no, they're it's... like, hey, how do I sell in my group? That's how it's part of, for those of you who are ready for more, this is what I can give you. If you're not keep hanging out in my group and learning more, like what a great message that is. That's a message of service, no matter what stage you're at. Yeah. I love that. I love it a lot because so many people have mindset challenges around selling and they always say, but if you don't sell, you're doing a disservice to those people who need you. And so you're giving them the opportunity to make that decision versus you saying, oh, you need me. You need to buy from me. You're giving yep. them that opportunity. You're, You're helping them, them make opportunity. a decision. That's all. Yes. I literally just had this conversation with a team member the other day. All we are doing is helping them make a decision. Like I said to my team member, how would you help a friend make a big decision? That's yes. exactly what we should be doing. That's exactly what sales should be. And here's the thing, Robin, I think that other platforms create pressure to just get the sale. Whereas a group like who cares if they don't buy from me today? They're still going to be sticking around. If they right. don't, if they leave, people leave my group and that's fine. It just wasn't meant to be right there that it is what it is. Yeah. And I don't worry about it, but a lot of people stay. And then I will have people come to me and be like, I've been in your group for a while. I'm ready. Yeah. I don't feel that pressure. Of, I've got to go get the sale now because the nature of a group is you still keep people engaged until they are ready to buy versus Facebook ads. Oh, you got to capture them or else they're gone. And you don't have no Mm -hmm. idea who was interested. Even on Instagram and TikTok, like you have no idea, like you, you can't continue building a relationship with them after they've watched that video, the way that you can inside of a group is the power of a group. And that is authentic selling. Yeah. I love it. I love it. This has been just fabulous. And I know that there's a whole strategy with SEO and all of that for people to just accidentally quote unquote, find you on Facebook. Can I make a quick note about that to release some pressure? Don't worry about that. Especially if you're in the beginning stages of creating your group, you're going to choose different names. Your group name will evolve your description of your group. Don't stress too much about that. Okay. It doesn't mean that the name isn't important or that SEO in terms of groups isn't important, but what is really important is, are you 
you committed to showing up in your group and talking to people? Because if you do that, then Facebook will see that your group is engaged and they mm -hmm. will start suggesting it regardless of what your name is. So a lot right. of people feel like they have to prepare and get everything perfect. I just want to say, throw perfect out the window. I don't even remember what my name was. My name was like the name of the challenge I was running. I wasn't even going to leave my group open afterward. Like I had no, no long-term strategy at all. And I figured it out. And quite frankly, my grew faster when I was more focused on like showing up and providing value and talking to people than I was about like the name or SEO. So I just well, want to throw that in there for anybody who has That's why I brought that up because if you're yeah. doing this strategy like you are yes. and creating these destination events, you're bringing the people in. Yes. So you don't have to worry as much about that, well, which is- You're in I control. Think, you're in the driver's seat. Yes. A yes. lot of people are like, this is happening to me. My group isn't engaged or I'm not getting people in there as if they're like, if this is where the tough love is going to come into play, as if they're like a helpless victim. You're not a helpless victim. Don't get me wrong. There are challenges. Robin, I agree with you. I have seen engagement drop over certain points, even from last year. I've seen dips. Like we've seen all of that too. Facebook is Facebook. Like any social platform, the algorithm is going to do its thing. There are going to be adjustments that need to be made. It's not going to work the same way that it did a year ago, two years ago. Like that, can we just expect that's going to happen? Because I think that'll remove a lot of pressure. But here's the thing, like none of that really truly matters if you are doing the strategy that I said, because you are in control. You are in control of who you bring into your group. You are in control of the people you talk to and the relationships that you form. You don't have to sit back and wait for Facebook to show your stuff to people. So I guess I just want to say to everybody listening, take back that control. Because I think once you do that, you're in a position to show up and really make an impact. Yeah, absolutely. I think on that note, it's time to end because what more can you do besides <laughs> take control over your business, your entrepreneurial journey and use this yeah. tool to do that? Michelle, do you have any just like last minute, super quick tips, or would you like to just share how listeners can connect with you, find you, maybe even join your group, work with yeah. you, whatever? Yeah, for sure. So I would say another quick tip for you guys is to really consider your group like you would think about a house party that you're throwing. So what do you want the party to be like? Who do you want to be invited? What do you want to do at the party? How do you want people to feel at the party? Like, I think if you can really take some time to even just reflect on that, it's going to help you create the environment that you want to create, which means that you're going to be more likely to show up in your group. I see a lot of people fall out of love with their groups and stop showing up because maybe the environment isn't what they really want to create. It's your party you get to decide. And so taking some time to really think about that, like, what will you share? What won't you share? What are the things that you want to do? How is your group different than the other groups that are out there? These are really great questions to challenge you to think about how you can position yourself differently. So I would say that's another really quick tip. And again, like I can't say it enough, market what's inside of the group, not the group itself. And people will come, the right people will come. And mm -hmm. you don't have to do a ton of promo threads or follow trains to get those people in. If you are viewing it almost as marketing an offer is marketing your group. So I I think those are my other quick tips. If you want more content like this, or you want to talk more about groups, or you want more resources for growing and monetizing a group, join me in my own group. That's where I share all of that stuff. It's called Market Like a Boss. If you search for it, you'll find it. And we've got almost 7,000 women in there. We are very much going all in on Facebook groups. And so you're in good company, right? If you join, I also have a free starter bundle. It's called the Your First 100 Starter Bundle. It's got a checklist for anybody who's on the fence about starting a group. Should I start a group? This checklist will help. It also has resources to help you get your group started, including naming, like creating a description for it. So some of the stuff that we mentioned, like SEO type stuff will be helpful in that bundle. And then we also have resources and suggestions for how you can get your first 100 members in. I think there's a really cool, like, milestone, right? When you hit hundred members. And so that's your first 100 starter bundle. It's a great resource for anybody who's what the heck do I do? Or anybody reviving a group, have a group, but maybe you've fallen off. No shame. Like you get to start fresh now and the bundle can help with that. That's awesome. That's generous and super cool at the same time. <laughs> So thank you, Michelle, for being here. This was absolutely fabulous. Such a wealth of information. I will link the episode that we had maybe, I don't know, maybe a year to 18 months ago with Brooke Jefferson. She talked about more of the other logistical sides of the Facebook group. But I think there's so much value in this episode that people may not even want to go listen to that. But if you really want to dive deep into Facebook groups, that may help you too, listeners. And with that, I am going to sign off and we will see everyone next week.